Previously on Sailing Ruby Rose, we took our sailboat through the French canals from the Mediterranean coast of France all the way through to the Atlantic coast. And coming soon, we have a really exciting announcement for a giveaway. I don't want to say too much, but it basically involves you, your friends or family and the Canal du Midi. So make sure you subscribe to our channel for your chance to win. Again, that announcement will be coming out very soon on this channel and also on our social media pages. In the meantime, let's get on with this week's episode. Good evening, everyone. Today, or tonight, this evening, we are heading into La Rochelle, into the centre. Now, we don't really have much of a plan apart from just have a lovely walk around. Beer yes. and or wine is obviously yes. involved. Dinner. Dinner. And a lovely ice cream. And an ice cream, yes, that's true. Okay, so we do have a plan. But we also want to show you La Rochelle because it is absolutely beautiful it's very historic very very lovely very vibrant particularly in the middle of summer which it right now is and uh yeah it's a friday night so there should be quite a bit going on yeah i do love la rochelle yeah i really we, this is it's definitely one of our favorites here. but we say that about valencia don't we we love valencia we love barcelona we love la 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 but la rochelle has got a real Fun spot in my it's heart. A certain je ne sais quoi. No, I tell you what it is. It was the first. It was our first port of call after our first really long passage. Yeah. 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 We sailed from England and landed in La Rochelle. This was in what 2013. Yeah, and I thought I was, I, you know, I thought I was Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> and then we celebrated with um, like a massive seafood pot. Do you remember? Oh God, those are the days. Yeah. And now we're back after what about five years of absence five years and i don't know thirty thousand miles or something twenty thousand thirty thousand i don't know four four <laughs> miles <laughs> all of this has just been green screened <laughs> none of this ever happened so yes anyway la rochelle possibly our favorite place in france it has to be up there shortly Oop. that's the second time i've tripped over third we are in uh, Menemes, Port de Menemes, is that what it's called? Port, Port Menemes, Port Menemes. Anyway, so there's, I think, three if not four marina options in La Rochelle. And we're in, like, the giant marina just on the outskirts. I mean, there's over 3,000 berths here. There's loads and loads of shipyards here, boat builders, I mean, all of the big, most of the big, I should say, French manufacturers are here. Neil, Fontaine Peugeot, Nauditech, who else, Nick? Amel, keep going, Lagoon? Anyway, loads. Um, so yes, it's really a major hub uh, in the French boat building industry. Yes. And uh, yeah, frankly, I can see why. What better place to base yourself than La Rochelle? I mean, over the coming, what we've got about another month six weeks of sailing you will see the areas that we are going to sail all the little atlantic islands and port towns on the coast of france mm. and they are well to my memory spectacular they, they are spectacular they are spectacular it's they are amazing i really think that you guys are going to be like wow i never knew that places like that existed yeah, or at least I, I suspected that they might but yeah. i didn't realize where they were or how to get to them and yeah it's just amazing i think after the bvis i think probably this is the best cruising ground yeah i agree different different completely they're, they're, different they're very different bvis is just jaw-droppingly beautiful mm -hmm. and the sailing is easy this is yeah, it's the it's, same. It's pretty in a different amazing. way. Yes, but the thing about this place is, you turn up here and you get wallop French cuisine, French I wine, know. and you're like bloody hell. <laughs> Life is good. Life is good. Yeah. <laughs> Like many European cities, La Rochelle's history dates back to antiquity. However, it wasn't until medieval times that the city really began to flourish. For 500 years, it was the biggest port in Western France. Its naval and nautical routes are still very present today, which may be one of the reasons our sailors love it so much here. A bit breezy. 
Hopefully the wind isn't uh, interfering too much with the microphone, but there is this massive ship, kind of two-masted, I don't know what it is actually, maybe when I when it gets a bit closer I'll be able to tell you. Uh, it's coming this way, but I don't know what harbour it's going to go into. It seems way too big for like anywhere, so we'll see. Oh, it's a Greenpeace ship. <laughs> just on the phone hopefully he'll be here in a minute but the footbridge is up so obviously they're going into the um, the marina just behind me it's gonna be tight squeeze chose the wrong time to be on the phone. <laughs> I don't know where he is, I've completely lost him, but I hope he got to see that. That was awesome. Very impressive. Did you see that? Yeah, that makes our canal transit seems like a, you know, <laughs> waving, a <laughs> waving a pencil around in the Albert Hall. Good on him. Now this has become our favourite place to have an evening drink. Although the only problem is that we can very rarely get a seat, so we'll see. Found one! <laughs> only seat available right next to the van. <laughs> Overnight, although the sun be directly in our face. Oh, we always talk about how much we 
I think it's the je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I don't know, they have a, a kind of... I don't know, there's a slight disdain for authority that kind of is ingrained in them. That everything is... They just... I don't know, across the board, there is a certain je ne sais... No, there's a certain I don't give a attitude to everything. It, it is, isn't it? They just, they really are, like, authority is optional. They are industrious and hardworking, and all I would say is I'm, I, I won't not, I never knock the French. I love this country, and if I had to live in another country, I'd live in France. I, there's, I, I love everything about it. Um, obviously, we've talked about this before. They have some horrendous political problems, as much as any country does. Um, we're not getting embroiled in French politics. They um, shrug their shoulders to authority. They are fiercely protective of their traditions, from minor traditions to major traditions, and fiercely protective of their way of life, which I find, I thought, I used to find it frustrating, now I just find it endearing. Like they're absolutely, you know, their lunch hours are sacrosanct. Like the entire country shuts down for two hours. Nothing's open. Like 12 till 2. Shops on Saturday afternoons. Sundays, nothing's open. Um, and they protect their culture. They have a, a deep, deep love of food. Um, and they put a lot of love and passion into a lot of things that they do. I, I, I love it here. I do. I love it. It, it, it appeals to the rebellious side of my personality. Um, not that that's a big part of my personality, but nonetheless it, it does. And I read also that the French riot so much and have such a history of rioting that when Napoleon rebuilt Paris in the 1800s, he built the streets really narrow to stop them from rioting. This is a nation of people that protest regularly. They take shit from no one. Um, and Oh yeah, okay. You know, politically, they've had a few problems over the last couple of hundred years and wars, etc. But I, I love the culture. I, I, I do love the culture. Yeah, obviously, if you live here, it's frustrating. And, you know, people always say, "Oh, this their culture. They're very French. They have a very <laughs> French way of life." In the same way that we've met, you know, people that are very Swiss or as half Italian, very Italian or very English, are very English. And those cultural peccadillos and idiosyncrasies sometimes can be used as a negative, sometimes they can be used as a positive, and sometimes it's just an observation. So this is neither positive nor negative, it's just observation. There are things that are very culturally French to me. Um, just enjoy it. I think it's a, it's a grown man that's put his bollocks into a mangle and is trying to extract them. been on my mind sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light hey darling we could get out of town see the beautiful world around want to see it now pack our bags and get in that car leave a real far let's get out we can leave this city let's drive to the open air yeah the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair we can look back someday I don't know where the record button is, so... Never work with children or animals. What, what am I? <laughs> Both. <laughs> I Thank you. Hey, darling. You know we're gonna have a really good time. Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright. and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out We 
we've got a problem. Ah, our gearbox is gone. What the hell? That sounds like it, something's just slipped into place there. Yeah, so the, the, the gearbox is slipping. I'm fairly sure that the it could be a clutch cone problem. Yeah, we've taken some decisions, uh, done a bit of a turnaround in more ways than one, and um, I think now is not the time to talk about it. We're still kind of trying to process uh, the things that we've been talking about, but we'll explain everything in a few days when we have our thoughts together.